Um, my name is David Tate and it's uh, with great pleasure that I introduce to you uh, Sir Mayne Campbell and we're privileged today to have a number of other distinguished um, speakers and people here to answer your question. Those are uh, Mr Robert Brown, MSP, Katie Gordon, MSP candidate for, Ke for Kelvin side and uh, Andrew Chamberlain, Chairman of Gra Glasgow University of Liberal Democrats. Sir Mayne was born in Glasgow and educated locally at Hill Head Secondary School before moving on to the University of Glasgow where he studied for an MA and an LLB with contemporaries such as John Smith and Donald Dewar. It was at this young age that he achieved arguably his greatest political triumph, that of President of the Glasgow University. <laughs> <laughs> It was in 1987 that he was elected uh, MP for North East Fife, and in 2002 he was appointed as Deputy Leader to the Liberal Democrat Party. In January 2006 he won the contest to become Leader of the Liberal Democrat Party in the United Kingdom, and it's now my pleasure to invite him to rise and to briefly address the Assembly of Britain. Friday afternoon. Um, it's great to be back on Gilmore Hill. Uh, I was born in Park Road. I went to Hillhead School in Oakfield Avenue and I came here for six years. So I think I can claim to be about as local as it gets. I've come to talk about politics in Britain. I've come to answer your questions as much as anything else, so I won't speak for very long. I want to talk about foreign policy because that's a particular interest of mine. I don't want to talk about foreign policy because it seems to me that although it's sometimes said that all politics is local, that we're all concerned about tax, about what's in our pocket, we're concerned about tuition fees, we're concerned about the things which affect us directly and financially, foreign policy is the way by which you measure the ethics of any government. And when this government came to power, Robin Cook, who's untimely dead, saddened many of us. Robert Cook argued for a foreign policy with an ethical dimension. And what he said was we should put human rights and the protection of human rights at the very centerpiece of our foreign policy. That was his belief. But it's not a belief which has been implemented by the government of which he was such a distinguished member. And of course, in particular, it has found its expression in the policy of taking military action against Iraq and the consequences which that has had for that country and for the whole region. I don't know if you were one of the two million who marched. There were many people who did march. There were people, my own constituency in North East Fife, who have been members of the Conservative Party for 30 years who <coughs> left and who joined us because we were the only political party indicating outright opposition to the notion of military action against Iraq. And in yet in spite of that, the House of Commons, by majority, the Liberal Democrats alone voting against the government and the combined ranks of Labour and Tory MPs, but with some very distinguished exceptions, like Ken Clark of the Tories, Robin Cook from Labour, who left the government so, so he could make that vote. But nonetheless, the House of Commons endorsed military action. Military action which was illegal, against the Charter of the United Nations. Military action which did not have the endorsement of the Security Council of the United Nations. Military action which last year, in the consequences of that action, resulted in 34,600 Iraqi civilians being killed in their own country. And we have done in that action more to damage the cause of international relations, more to damage a rules-based system, the system which grew up after the Second World War, and which, by the most extraordinary irony, was a system which was largely fashioned by two Republican, by sorry, a Democrat and a Republican president, Harry Truman, Democrat, Dwight Eisenhower, famous Second World War general. And between them, they fashioned the rules-based system, the rules-based system which George W. Bush 
aided and abetted by Tony Blair, has done so much to destroy and to undermine. And now we're left after four years in Iraq with a country where sectarianism is on the rise, where we enjoy, if that's the right word, the antipathy of the Iraqi people. A majority of them believe that coalition forces are legitimate targets. And an even larger majority believe coalition forces should leave. A country where sewage and water and electricity are worse in many places than they were during the time of Saddam Hussein. A country possibly on the verge of breakup, dividing into three constituent parts, relatively rich north, uh, inhabited by the Kurds, relatively rich south, inhabited by the Shias, and a barren, poor economic center inhabited by the Sunnis who have been supplanted as the political elite in that country. And now the Prime Minister announced this week that we take some British troops out. The truth is we should bring all British troops out. They should come out, as we have argued, by the end of October. They should come out because of the words of the senior British soldier, General Sir Richard Dunner, before Christmas, our presence there exacerbates the security situation. The senior British soldiers said we kicked the door down. Our presence exacerbates the security situation and we should leave sooner rather than later. That's why Iraq has been the worst foreign policy decision since Suez in 1956. And now we have the threat of military action against Iraq. Now we have the possibility. I was in the United States last week. You don't have to go very far among the think tanks, talking to officials and politicians to realize that when people argue there's a one in three chance that President Bush on his way out might take military action against Iran, that that is something we should consider as a serious possibility, if not a likelihood. Military action against Iran would buttress the existing regime would encourage nationalism. It would spread nuclear material throughout the whole course of the Middle East. It would undermine stability in the region. It's the worst possible option. And yet that has been seriously contemplated. And so far we have yet to achieve from this government, in spite of our efforts, an unequivocal statement that the United Kingdom would not support action of that kind. Now I think these are issues which affect our safety, but they're also issues which tell us about the nature of politics in this country today. And that's why I argue, just as I argued standing alongside Robin Cook, uh, with whom I cooperate on many issues, in spite of the fact that we were in different parties, I argued for a foreign policy with an ethical dimension, because only such a foreign policy will give us the stability give us the predictability in international relations which is essential for our own interests. 